этой части эфира мы хотим немножко поговорить с моим гостем о аспектах безопасной разработки в... Наверное, ты сам лучше представься, расскажи. Аркадий, пожалуйста, introduce yourself. Да, всем добрый день, меня зовут Аркадий. Hello, everybody, my name is Arkady Vaznikov. I work in Yandex Cloud. I'm the head of Identix Management and Resource Management. So, my objective is as the head of the service, so that everything would be developed, impl implemented. Every, everything has to be maximally secure. And moving to the topic of our conversation, we have to begin by saying the following. Every development process, including safe development process, is connected to the specifics of the topical area. And the first question that I would like to discuss with you, what is the specifics of cloud solutions in the cross-section of security of their development? And is it available at all? When we speak about cloud development, you have to understand the specifics of the cloud, the topical area. There are things without which it's impossible to do anything. All the access limitations is based on the IAM. So if we are speaking about development in the cloud, you have to understand how the IAM is built, uh, the distribution roles and ways of access rights distribution. The second one, what you have to understand, is the basic level of infrastructure. We're speaking about it constantly during all our conferences, IAS, PAS, SAS. And if, depending on which services are used uh, during development, Depending on this, we understand what is a platform and from the point of view of security and those who use cloud solutions. So if we are speaking about IaaS level, it's the security on level of physical data centers, on the level of network. Yeah. If we are speaking about for example, security from the point of view of access to virtual machines is uh, provided uh, is provided by the clients by using different tools. But if we're speaking about solution pass, where managed solutions are used, then everything is covered by the uh, service, uh, cloud service. And many aspects uh, you shouldn't even think about it because the platform co covers all these problems. For you. Then there's another topic, the threats related with uh, cloud com compromising, compromitation. Uh, they uh, do entail more serious risks than simple compromitation of the internal network of the company because the network uh, of the company where the development is happening is uh, one, but the com compromitation of the cloud can lead to compromitation compromising the analogy of similar networks like that. So here I have a question from the point of view of development processes. How can you fight against those risks on the level of development? For example, we can limit the access and we can begin with that. Okay, that's understandable. If we are going to speak about a distribution of the access rights, Nah. Then we are going to speak about roles of services and from the point of view of roles and on-call, on-call, on not on-call. If we say that this is on-call engineer of some services for him in order to be able to react to some calls from support clients, they need to have proper rights to look at different metadata uh, from the resources. So there are limitations that engineers will have access to specific fractions or actions. But if we would like to see whatever the catalog with such identifiers exists or don't exist, the role of on-call engineer does it. It's a rotated role and we control here internally that on-call engineer, which is on the shift right now, that after rotation of the uh, shift, the access rights are transferred to new employees from him and his access rights are disengaged. 
So a new developer comes to the cloud, for example. How his first workday looks like. One of the first are developers who come to this. They look at the course of safe development in the cloud. Some people know, some people don't know. Maybe some people want to know some new things. How to properly do development. What are the main types of vulnerabilities and what do you have to pay attention to during the development. The second thing is uh, protection of the equipment itself. So developer, cloud, any developer, not only I am. Their notebook will definitely have to be encoded, their disk. And then there's a second factor. Cloud developer cannot get access to this platform and to this cloud. Another thing from the protection point of view, security point of view, the access to hosts always should be done through the operational host. And it is being fixed through logins, virtual machines, services. Not only I am, but any other developers. But if we will look from the point of view of the development process that you use, are there any significant differences from classical SDLC in the cross-section of security, which measures at all stages of development, I mean, process-related ones you use in your team to provide security of the end product? Uh, you want me to speak about differences or generally? Yeah, you can speak generally. Well, generally, these are things related with the process of development. If we are speaking about a, like code review without a proof of the person from PLUS, and we could have different scenarios for the malicious users, maybe for bugs, maybe for typos. But the second, I think, will be regarding the delimination of the permissions of the rights for the users when a developer gets into the cloud before they pass the courses for the cyber security before they sign their documents where they must learn what is their role in the project if it's a developer if it's an analyst what exactly are they supposed what they should do what they should not do every time when a new employee comes to work, they should read these documents, sign the documents, and then they will be able to get some permissions, some rights to go around the network. If we're talking about some technical stuff, it's usually about the tests and checks. Some of them involve a specific amount of tests to be passed. Some of them are connected with the code analysis for different vulnerabilities different library versions which have several vulnerabilities and a developer maybe a group of developers would be using a specific library they will try and solve this task as fast as possible in this case they will have to solve the problem as soon as possible it may not affect the cloud itself, it might not be relevant to the cloud due to, due to the specificity. But obviously they have to double check it, they have to pass all the tests and try to solve this vulnerability as soon as possible and be able to update the server version as soon as possible. To do so, we have different versions. You can do and use some state, some in-house tools if there is a, an urgency at hand. <clears throat> During the previous discussion, we covered, at least we addressed the point of security of open source solutions. So now, when we are working on the parts of the cloud infrastructure, is there some place for open source? Well, obviously, there is some place for open source and where we can we use open source. But here we should understand that what is a critical component of a system and what is not. 
If we are speaking about the development of a certain service from scratch, then it will be different compared to the partial development. The typical example would be some feedering of users. There is no need to implement the specification itself and calculate all these lines again and again. Obviously, we use open source for that task. But that does not mean that the testing of the libraries, they can be covered with multiple different tests. But obviously, we use our own tests because they cover our scenarios and they cover user scenarios. So obviously, yes, there is some place for open source, but they always weigh this on the scales when we take in some open source solutions First, we see what kind of open source solutions actually exist. Then we see if they fit to our resource model, to our raw model. Maybe we will have some more freedom in terms of customization. And where we can, we use it, yes. And speaking about open source, it's reasonable to think about the attack on the chains of on the delivery chains, chains and if somebody is already in the pipeline of the product and then it was implemented some some events occurred what do you what's your work with supply chain attacks we have a quarantine the most fresh libraries are not used in our repository and then we have our internal depository where we place artifacts from the outer world and then we use it in our internal structure it could be an artifact library for java for example and other languages too <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to formulate the next question regarding the dependency. The audit. Do you have do you perform the audit for analysis for the protection? Just accept some code and you spend some time and then after you spend some time in quarantine and then it gets into your internal project. Well, we usually have some process. We look for libraries which could potentially have some vulnerabilities. They make a report, they make a task, a ticket. And the second part is when we create a completely new service or maybe a part of the service and functionality which was heavily reworked. And before we put it into production, obviously we have an additional task for security. And before we move it into production, our designated team runs all the tests on this specific area if there are any vulnerabilities and if there are they will send some feedback that we will have to correct it or maybe there are no vulnerabilities and maybe there are some things which could be improved but they are not critical enough to postpone the launch into the production but if they are they are fixed before it's launched into production and the second point i think it's not really about security it's for example if a part of the code is re-implemented from scratch then after it goes through the security audit we usually have this according to the plan usually we analyze different hosts we see the metrics we see the errors we see if everything checks out if there are any anomalies in the logs and stuff. Do you have a designated team for that matters, or some developers are also involved in it? Maybe you have some security champions or some analog of it. Developers are actually involved, but we do have a designated team. When they implement some part of service from scratch especially, they actively consult and they're actively engaged in this work and they can provide some commentary on why this is implemented like this and if it's an error, if it's a mistake, if it's some vulnerability in terms of business logic or not. But when we speak about checking for vulnerability, designated team for vulnerability and obviously you can always ask the specialist we will 
So we have this database. Please analyze if there are any problems here. They will validate and they will see even before they start. That's at the level of the technical design. And after this is done, they will double check if this is actually works as it should be, as it's supposed to be. We were talking about the aspects of the cloud, some parts of the cloud, of its internal structure. But if we just imagine, if we are not developing some parts of the cloud, but inside the cloud. If a developer team wanted to move their repositories there, move the pipeline there, all those tools for DevOps, if they wanted to move it to cloud, what cloud would give them? What kind of benefits, what kind of advantages, disadvantages of the in terms of security? Is there any reason in terms of security to actually give this very serious critical process well, obviously, in Yandex Cloud, and we, all, we mentioned all the time, we use the quoting and we use our, our own cloud. The cloud services live in the cloud, and we said it multiple times. And when we are speaking about the delimination of rights and permissions, we use different authentication cards and IDs. And when we use this kind of approach, in the process of using the cloud, on the one hand, we work as the platform developers, but on the other hand, we actually are users of this cloud. And we will be able to see where we can do better, where there are some problems, there are some mistakes and errors. So it helps us to make priorities. And if we see that it's even not very comfortable for us, probably it will not be very comfortable for our users, so we can improve on it. If we are speaking about, let's say, some stuff connected to CI-CD, then the agents for CI can work in the cloud, there are no real problems with it. And to conclude, I always ask this question, what's the most valuable you can advise, what, what's the most valuable piece of advice you can give to developers in terms of security? What can you tell them so that they will be better in terms of IT security? Maybe not the most popular thing, I think not all the companies have this, but when I worked in Yandex, not in Yandex Cloud, but just in Yandex, they had their own internal capture the flag event. And in terms of broadening the horizon, in terms of getting new knowledge and honing your skills, these events are actually really, really cool because you take a different perspective, you can have a different outlook on what happens there. And I took part in some of these events and I was really hooked on it. Maybe it was interesting in terms of, I, would, I wouldn't say it was important when I moved to Yandex Cloud, but still it gives you a perspective, it gives you information about the foundation. You can actually touch, you can run some, you can try and exploit some of these some threats. Yeah, you can actually try and become a hacker in this uh, role-playing environment. Okay, so one more question then. There are a lot of resources which allow you to become, uh, feel like a hacker without going to CTF. You have Pentest Lab, you have Try Me. Do, do you really want to delve that much into this hacking site or that will be too much? No, I think it will be too much, it's overhead, and I think it requires a little bit different background if you want to go into this professionally, if you want to look for vulnerabilities. I think you need to have, to have at least a different profile, so if you are a developer, you should have a different profile too. And for developers, usually Usually they care about uh, fault proof of the system, and loads and especially peak loads, how do you write the code so that... So that it would work all day, all night, and they will not be called 
during the night simply because somebody could not sleep because the system didn't work properly. So it's all about the communication between services. It's not just some it's not just some line of code, some video. It's your code, it's your colleagues, it's the people who sit next to you. You can talk to them, you can learn how you can do this correctly, you can exchange information. They can tell you how it works properly. So I think this internal communication is very important. Thank you very much. Thank you, friends, for being here.